we're going to talk about the prospects of a Trump comeback. And, and most people I know, including Ed Rogers, believes a Trump comeback is what's necessary for Trump to win. Not that he's down and out and can't win it, but that it's going to require a change in trajectory. Ed Rogers, for those of you who don't know, as I said, one of the most brilliant strategists in either party I've ever known. His political experience goes way back, uh, including time in the Reagan White House. Uh, and he understands uh, the whole party, um, not just because he's uh, uh, from Alabama, but I'll say he has the true grit of Bear Bryant and the tactical genius of Nick Saban with a little bit of the scrambling capacity of Joe Willie Namath in him. Ed, unmute. Welcome. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, you are you are a Trump supporter and a Trump donor and I am. a worried one. So just 30,000 feet, explain to folks what, what's currently concerning you before we talk about what he needs to do better in your view. What's, he, what's going wrong currently for Team Trump and for the candidate himself? What I think is going wrong with Team Trump is Trump's communication skills. Does he have the communication skills the discipline and the precision to deliver the message against Kamala that needs to be delivered. So far, he does not. And it's getting him deeper into a hole. If I had to bet today, I would bet on Kamala as winning. I don't know if Trump has it within him to get back and to, and to put some lead on the target, as Haley Barber would say, for inflation, immigration, crime, our cities, the things that we know are salient political issues. So far, he's not even close. He hasn't had a good message day since before his speech at the convention. Hey guys, it's your girl Melanie, and this is my independent report on what's going on. Trump is struggling right now, and a lot of people don't want to admit it, they don't want to see it, they don't want to believe it, but it's absolutely true. Now, I know people say polls are not real, don't believe the polls. Okay, you don't have to believe the polls, that's fine. Or say that 2016, they said that Hillary was winning. Well, the, the polls since then have corrected themselves and they've been within a 1% uh, one percentage of margin of error since that time. And so what we're seeing now is that before when Trump was beating Biden, which he was clearly for over a year, beating Biden in the polls, everyone wanted to believe it. But now that it's Kamala Harris is winning in the polls, nobody wants to believe it. And this is the thing, Kamala Harris hasn't put out any policy or anything else, you know, like substantive. It's just all been very Hollywood, very, you know, media, darling media, uh, honeymoon, but without policy. And overall, people like Trump's policies. They like how they lived economically under Trump. This shows in a lot of polls and a lot of surveys that have been going around. But the reality is that it is going to be an uphill battle to, in this short campaign period, for Trump to transform his campaign into something that is going that people don't know about him already, so that he appeals more to the independent voters, the swing voters that are actually going to determine this election. Okay, so we're not talking about the base, we're talking about reality here, and people don't want to hear it or they rage against it, but I deal with facts. And not all the, you know, I, again, I'm outside of a bubble. And so I see these things. And this is a Republican, a, a Trump supporter, a strategist. I have not, all of them are saying the exact same thing. So this is an issue that cannot be ignored. So let's say you were brought into the campaign and they said, Ed, we want you to be the traveling chief of staff and we want you to sit with Trump and, and he'll check with you before he tweets. He'll talk to you before the rallies. It's obviously a complicated thing, and most people who've been in that role or something like it with Donald Trump, whether it's Sean Spicer or Hope Hicks or, or Steve Bannon, they say, you know, you can say anything you want to him. He's going to do what he's going to do. So what would you say to him if he, if he brought you on the road with him? Uh, how would you try to explain to him what he needs to do and to convince him to do it? I'm sure there's no magic language. Trump has got good people. He's had good people. They know this is a problem. His discipline is a problem. I think it's gotten worse, if that's possible. I don't think I would have any magic words about, hey, boss, we are not doing well here. Hey, boss, this hurt us a lot. Hey, boss, this really distracted from our message. I don't know if he has, you know, all good politicians have sort of an anti-staff instinct or impulse, from anti-handler impulse from time to time. And maybe Trump just does the opposite of what he's told 
out of some psychological need. It's it's beyond under my understanding. It, it, would this you say that makes he's it got, hard on himself? Would you say he's got to completely stop talking about January 6th, about the stolen election, about the fake AI crowds, or or that's part of his brand? He just has to make it a subsidiary to the more disciplined focus on the issues. Talking about things that are harmful for his candidacy needs to stop. He needs to focus on what this election needs to be about in terms of what people care about. It's not hard to see what those issues are. And he can't articulate against, uh, he can't articulate what her challenges are without revealing his own. And he reminds people of what people don't like about Trump or what they think is inadequate about Trump. When he gets when he goes on these wild tangents and said these and said these these wacky things, the AI crowd uh, conspiracy, you know, was was JD Vance? Did he have to defend that today? Was that part of the campaigns? But being on the back foot today, or are Senate candidates out there, GOP Senate candidates, are they supposed to get on board with that? I mean, he puts everybody in a hole. When you look at what's happened with the vice president. I won't ask you if you've ever seen anything like it, because I know you haven't. There's never been anything like no. it. And uh, you're you're very clued into Washington establishment, bipartisan, you know, the 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 um the, the political class. How surprised are you and are people you talk to about how well she's done? Or do people just assume it's because she's not, you know, she's just on prompter and that's easy? Or is she exceeding well, people's expectations? Here again, the Alabama football metaphor, the defenders have sort of fallen down. And so she's running in the clear. She's on the teleprompter. She's got a very limited word count every day, certainly of much of anything new and certainly nothing that's unscripted. But hey, good for her. You know, she's taking advantage of the of the card she's being dealt. Nobody challenge her. And the Republicans, we can't just whine about that. We need our candidate to take our message forward and to challenge her, to get her on some of his turf for a while. It's you know, the media, the same people that cover for Biden are covering for her, but that's not new for, for Republicans. He's got to change the game. He's got to change his game. Again, one of the things that it seems like Republicans want him to do, and some people would call this guy a rhino or anyone who says these type of things, you're a rhino, you're Republican in name only. There, it's just, you know, he has no incentive to go against Trump. He's just speaking reality, speaking facts. And right now, everything, the momentum is on Kamala Harris side. And Trump, if the trajectory continues the way it is, he is losing in November, period. Not only, we haven't even discussed the DNC, the, the Democratic convention, that's going to be a boost for her. Then we're talking about, there are now rumblings, I'm trying to put the report together of how Biden will drop out in October and she will become the president that will give her a boost that will just send this to the moon. So like, and she will be an incumbent and then it'll be all this fanfare and then it's too late to attack or do anything else. And then that will happen. So he's saying like Trump right now, you know, they want him to change who he is or change his messaging, but then you're going to alienate his base. So he's stuck in a rock and a hard place. Like he can keep talking about policy, but then no one's tuning in to Trump to listen to policy. They want to hear funny. They want to hear the digs. They want to hear him be the comedian and, and just say off the cuff wild stuff. That's what gets the crowd excited. So if you switch him out now and he's just this kind of like, oh, policy, policy, policy. Can he talk about policy in a way that would be entertaining enough to pull crowds, to draw the big, you know, rallies and keep doing those things? I, I, you know, and outside of that, you, his base, enjoy, like the base enjoys listening to the things that he has to say. So to put a muzzle on him, how is that going to help? Now, the base will still be there, but will that really draw in independent voters? I don't think it's going to be enough. Would you anticipate that she's she's going to have rough periods uh, between now and November, or is it possible she just never does because the press is defending her so entirely and her staff is pretty smart about? I think I think it's possible. I mean, they'll do yeah, they'll do some cosmetic things. They'll whistle up some of the usual suspects from one of the networks and have some sort of 
scripted, semi-scripted interview and say, okay, well, that's done. You know, I took it, uh, you know, to, took some tough questions from one of the best. You know, they'll, they can get through it, but there's no such thing as a campaign that doesn't have its time in the dunking booth. She will have her time in the dunking booth. Whether or not Trump puts her there or something strikes, lightning strikes somewhere, nobody knows. I don't think she'll, she will completely skate, but she has a big tailwind and she has a lot of air cover. And here again, the Trump campaign, absent Trump, isn't going to overwhelm her and her momentum now. We got to have a candidate that can do that. And so I'm sure the Trump campaign has, has all kind of good plans and the, knows the right things to say. And as you said at the beginning of the broadcast that they have had a half a day of good messaging. Well, well, great. We'll see if we'll see if it can include the candidate. So I wanted to bring you guys this report so you can understand what is actually going on with the state of the race right now. Can Trump pull this out? Can he do it? I don't know. Right now, the signs are not looking good. Again, anything negative that ha happens to Kamala Harris is not going to be reported. It's not going to be widely spread. It's going to be on Twitter. It's going to be in smaller circles online. It's going to be within the MAGA base, but it's not going to spread wide enough so that it reaches independent voters, those swing voters in the crucial states that it needs to hit. But make sure if you're still here that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my updates. And also make sure you leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm sure I'm going to get an earful and I will see you on the next one.